massive, massive good morning <laughs> to everybody out there. I'm Holly Power and I'm your timely host this morning. And this is a very, very exciting live video today. I'm just going to make sure we're streaming live and everything's happening. There we are. There's me on the screen. Woohoo! This is super, super exciting because not only is it my first live for 2021 here on the Timely channel, I also have an extremely special guest with me today. Can anybody guess who it is? You might recognise him. If you know me, you might know him. When I sat down with the Timely team and we discussed how we could best kickstart 2021, we knew the best thing to do was to bring somebody who is uber uber motivational very very goal setting focused uh, onto the screen with me on our very very first live in 2021 and there was nobody better that i could think of than my very own business partner and husband ryan power he is here with us this morning now i am going to i'm going to big him up a little bit because he's not so great at blowing his own trumpet but the thing is about ryan he has helped thousands and thousands of salon owners to transform. We have together in our business salonology over the last few years. Um, but he is one of these guys who's all about goal setting. Uh, he sets his sights on something. He loves to go and achieve it. Um, I've seen the whiteboard. I've seen the results. I've seen him run the marathons. I've seen him ride the 100 mile bike rides. I've seen him swim through Hyde Park. I have seen him achieve incredible incredible things and he's a very very big motivation in my life because he helps me to set my big goals and push forward to achieve them too we all need orion power in our lives so i thought he was the perfect person to bring onto my live video this morning so he could share his unique strategy to help you set your goals now of course we had some big news here in the uk yesterday that is going to affect how we run our businesses moving forward over the next few months but that doesn't mean that goals go out the window. In fact, it gives us an opportunity to set them and focus on them more than ever. So I wanted Ryan to come with me. Fortunately, he quite likes me. So we agreed to come along and host with our friends here at Timely. Um, and he's here to share his unique strategy with you. So welcome, welcome, Ryan. Thanks, Holly. And what a wonderful introduction. I really didn't know how you were going to possibly introduce me. So uh, with all things considered, I'm quite I'm quite pleased with that. So thank you. Um, and yeah, hi, everyone. Hi, Timely community. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this presentation. Looking forward to this. Um, and before we really dive in, I think it's just worth um, really echoing what Holly just said there. Obviously, there's lots going on in the world right now, but that shouldn't be a break or a block on your goals for the year ahead. Um, and in fact, your actual goals, they shouldn't even necessarily change. Maybe the path, the route you have to take to get there might now be a little bit different and you might have to work a little bit harder or think a bit more outside the box, but that shouldn't mean that your, your goals per se change um, and I'm hopeful that there will be lots of people who will use this a bit of extra time um, to actually be able to finally sit down and do some of this stuff this actual goal setting and what we're going to talk about in our time together this morning um, there's a few things for people to go away and think about afterwards which lots of business owners never ever think about they never sit down and actually go through as they just kind of plod along and they react and it's this reactive mindset of Something gets thrown at you and then you then go and react to it. Whereas actually um, the people who tend to succeed are those who actually have got a map, um, you know, a route planned out in advance. And yes, the route might change a little bit. But as I say, the destination, the end goal should be the same. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And uh, it's funny because um, we were talking about this the other day, how many people actually came out of the last lockdown and had their most successful months ever, didn't they? Because during lockdown, they did the work. Um, we saw people walk out of lockdown uh, kind of in two different categories, didn't we? We saw people come out and they were like, they felt sort of beaten down. Um, they had um, not sort of achieved any of the goals that they set for themselves personally. And they didn't use the time effectively because it was a little bit of a sucker punch. And they were like, what's this? This is a bit scary and a bit full on we're kind of a little bit more well versed in it now aren't we know what this is we've done it before we know we come out the other side um and also it's january february who 
wants to go outside anywhere. I mean, it's a bit different if you're over in Australia and New Zealand and it's summertime. But for us, it's the middle of winter. The evenings are dark. It's freezing cold. So actually, we can hunker down. And we can get a load and load of stuff happening, can't we? And that's what's actually yeah. super exciting about a lockdown, uh, because you have that chance to do the work that gets you places. Yes, indeed. And uh, well. <laughs> And uh, also as well, I think one of the other things touching on that, as you say, yeah, so many people did succeed. Even during previous lockdowns, we've had tens and tens of emails from people, a lot of people who almost feel like they can't speak out and say because they feel like they, they can't say they're doing well at the moment because they're fearful of what others might think. However, as you say, there's unquestionably, there are people that are hitting goals and achieving them and I really want to try and focus on that today and let's keep it as positive as we possibly can. There's plenty of other negativity elsewhere. We're, we're definitely not going to focus on any of that. And you know what as well? And um, the main reason why most people don't hit their goals, they'll be like, oh, I never hit my goals, never hit my dreams. The main reason why people don't is because they don't have any in the first place. They don't actually have clear set goals. Most people's goals are wishy-washy at best um, and I think that's the first one I've ever said wishy-washy on a live webinar. Um, or they have, or they've just got nothing at all, okay? And I remember hearing something a long, long time ago when I first started my sort of personal development um, path, as it were, which is that if it's not written down, it's not a goal, okay? And less, less than 1% of people actually have a goal that's written down and is actually committed to paper. Um, I've actually got in my wallet, which isn't to hand, a bit of, I've got like an index card, a five by three index card, fold in half with my two biggest goals written on it. And they're in my wallet and I carry it around everywhere. Uh, you might not even know that, Holly, but I, they you know, do. But I'm wondering if about 14 years ago you had a picture of me in your wallet and I was your big goal. Yes. Anyway, um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and basically, um, you then see it all of the time, right? And that's the purpose. And you see it all of the time, all the time, all the time. And basically then at a subconscious level, um, you then start doing the things which automatically lead you toward those goals. So it's so important to get it written down. And I would encourage everyone watching this, by the time we finish our time today together, I hope you will then also do the same and get it written down, okay? Now, um, I am mindful already of the time we've got because we've not got long together. And you told me in preparation at least 20 times I talk too much and I need to be mindful of the clock today. So I think that we should just dive in. What do you think? Yeah, let's go. All right. So what I wanna, the way I want to break this down today for everyone is we're going to do uh, three steps. Okay, there's going to be three steps of what we're going to look at. And within those, there's going to be uh, nine or ten questions for people to ponder. And what I recommend is everyone watching this goes and gets a pen and a bit of paper if you're with us live um, and write down the questions. Don't necessarily write down the answers because it's going to take longer than the 22 minutes we've got remaining to go through and actually write it down. You actually want to write it down and then give yourself, you know, an hour Give yourself an hour slot, turn your phone off, sit down with a coffee um, and actually go through it and actually give it the actual time that it deserves. OK, this is your future that we are talking about. This is your hopes, dreams, aspirations and goals. What could possibly be more important than that? How can binging on Netflix possibly be as important as your future? OK, so. Step one that we're going to look at is an honest evaluation of where you are now. It's really difficult for us to plot a path of where we want to go if we don't know where we are right now, okay? It's a bit like being stuck in a maze. How do you get out? Well, even if you know where the, uh, the exit is, if you're not sure where you are, then you're going to be stuck for quite a long time, okay? So this is the first part of that, is to scribble this one down on your bit of paper. Question number one that you're going to want to ask yourself is, what went well in 2020? OK, what went well in 2020? Because even though there was a global pandemic going on, lots of stuff still went well for lots of people. OK, so you, it's really important here to almost take the blinkers off. Right. It's so easy, especially with 
social media and with the news all just throwing all this bad news at you all of the time sometimes we forget that there were still little diamonds in the rough through 2020 for lots and lots of people okay um i would recommend a good way that you can do this get your camera out get your iphone or whatever out go into your photos and go back to january the 1st 2020 and just slowly go through all of your photos and you will be amazed at how many magical moments that you had. You know, it might have just been that cup of tea with your mum or whatever it might be, right? It doesn't have to be the, the five-star luxury hotel in the Seychelles, which got cancelled, right? It could be anything, okay? But it's really important that we still focus on what did go well, okay? Start writing all that stuff down. Write down what your big wins were. Write down what your milestones were, okay? These are really, really important. We had so many people in our community who still had record-breaking years last year, even in the pandemic, right? People who won awards, people who got recognition after a long time, people who maybe finally went full-time with their business and it was no longer just a, a side hustle or a hobby for them, okay? It will be different for everyone. Maybe you took on your first member of staff. Maybe you went to bigger premises. Maybe you bought a house. Maybe you got married. There's a million and one things it could have been, okay? It's important for us to acknowledge those, okay? So that's point one. Just so we can look back and say, actually, there were so many good things that came out of 2020. It's not all doom and gloom. I know there's all stuff all over social media that's like, oh my God, it was the worst year ever. But actually there are lots of positive things that we can pull from it. And that's what we need to focus on, don't we? So that we can say, even in the darkest year, we still had all this light. So now exactly. we can move forward thinking, well, what if we could do that last year, what can we do this year? You got it. And also as well, the reason why that's an important place to start is I want that to put everyone in the right frame of mind with which then to tackle the next questions. This is why I mentioned earlier, turn your phone off when you do this exercise, or turn it on airplane mode when you do this exercise, okay? Don't be sat there with the negativity, the Facebook feed firing out stuff at you whilst you do it, because it's going to affect your judgment, okay? So part two of this honest evaluation where we are right now is what didn't go so well, okay? Because I'm not suggesting for one moment that this is, you know, complete rose tinted glasses and blinkered and no, there's not a pandemic going on and there's only good stuff because that's a little bit naive to suggest that. There is some stuff that's not going to have gone well in your business, okay? Um, and it's important to write those down as well, okay? Now, really, really important side note here to go along with that, is that we only want to be considering those things which are within our control, right? Mm. There's no point worrying about stuff that's out of our control, generally. Awful, awful, awful for your state of mind, okay? So, end up what didn't go so well, I'm not saying global pandemic, that's what happened that didn't go well. What didn't go so well might be, oh, I tried that new email sequence and I didn't get the results I was hoping for. Or I launched that new machine or that new treatment and the results I got weren't what I was expecting, okay? Because this again is important because if we can see what we tried that didn't work as we had imagined, then we've got another opportunity to try that again, do some things a little bit differently and get a different outcome, okay? Remember, we don't have failure, only feedback, right? So if something doesn't work, it's not a failure, it just didn't work out how we thought it was going to. So let's try it a little bit uh, differently. And as marketers and business owners, we are always going to be trying new stuff. And guess what? The vast majority of it is not going to work out how we planned, right? It's not going to be as we planned. We're going to fall on our faces time and time and time and time again. And that is okay because that is part of running a business, right? That is just part of it. You always say um, to me, Holly, and I love the analogy, you never pick up the autobiography of a billionaire and, uh, and it says, oh, first thing I tried, uh, I hit it at the ballpark and after two, two months, I was a billionaire right? Yeah. It never happens. It's always a story of ups and downs, normally big, big downs, the people that make it really big, right? So it's going to be the same for everyone else as well. So it's important to pay attention to that also. But the lesson obviously in that is those people, everybody's gone through that roller coaster and some people have dipped and then just given up. And this is oh. the whole point. The reason why these people have these books to reveal at the end that's a really interesting story is because every time they dip down on that roller coaster, they got themselves back up again and they kept moving forward and forward and forward. And that's the difference between the people who write the books because they've become the billionaires and the people that don't. They had the falls, 
like we've all had. They've had the struggles and the challenges, but they keep moving forward and they're focused on what they want to achieve. Exactly. Like the Chinese proverb, isn't it? Fall, fall down eight times, get up nine, or whatever the, uh, I think, something like that. I'm paraphrasing. Anyway, okay, let's move on. Right, so we've got what went well last year, and we've also got what didn't go so well. Not what went badly, what maybe just didn't go as well as what we had hoped. Let's call it that. Let's try and watch the language that we're using here when we go yeah. through this, because uh, we don't want this to then become some sort of pity party, right? This is, this is important stuff. So number three, the next thing you want to do then is you want to be mapping out where you are now. So we've looked at this evaluation of where we are versus where we want to be. Okay, where do we want to go? And one way that you can do this is literally to take a sheet of A4 paper, put a line straight down the middle of it, and then you can highlight the specific areas that you want to improve on, okay? So you would say, for example, um, right, for area one is Facebook, let's say for argument's sake, I have got X number of followers and I'm posting X number of times a week at the moment that's that's factual that's what i'm doing today by the end of the year i want to have this number of followers and i want to be posting this many times a day whatever the metric might be it's gonna be different for everyone okay i just want to give an example and what i like to do is i like to divide this up into different areas so for example you might divide up where you are now against where you want to be for personal uh, you know, mental health, financial, uh, physical, work-related, any area of your life that's important to you. Maybe you really want to focus right now on how you can serve your family better, about how you can be a, you know, a better mum or a better daughter or whatever it might be, okay? It's going to be different for everybody, so you want to adapt this um, for you. But again, it's important for us to understand where we are now in relation to where we want to go, because here's the good news all we've got to do is bridge the gap, right? That's all we've got to do, bridge the gap. If you want to, let's say for argument's sake, um, if you say, right, well, in this year of 2021, I want to make 100,000 pounds this year, and last year you made 70, well, you've not got to find the skills to get another 100. You've only got to bridge the gap. You know how to get 70. You've just got to work out how to get the extra 30. And then all of a sudden, when you think of it in those terms, it's like, oh, well, actually, uh, it's not quite the mammoth task that I thought it once was. OK, so again, whatever topics are important to you, you should do that. So would you suggest that if somebody's doing this particular exercise, that say they looked at the different goals they want to reach next year or this year, would it be worth them then looking back at what they'd achieved maybe in 2017, 2018, 2019, working their way through that process as well to say, well, look, I've already moved up. I've already started to bridge these gaps. It's just a, you know, a continuation, isn't it? Because I think some people felt that last year kind of broke, maybe broke their flow a little bit. But if you look and you look at the overall picture and that you're actually moving up and you know how to do it and you know how to grow, then that helps, doesn't it? So in order to move forward, to look back and see what we have already achieved is going to give us a little bit of um, reassurance in our capabilities in that we can move forward to achieve our new goals, right? 100%. I mean, if you're judging all of your success based on a period of time when you couldn't trade, then you're setting yourself up for a fall. At the end of the day, you want to you wanna set yourself up to win, right? This is supposed to motivate you to go on and live the life of your dreams, not put you in a position where you are crying into your sheet of paper because you feel that everything's falling around apart, uh, everything's falling apart around you, right? So yes, if that helps, do that. And if you've got to oh. this sort of process then absolutely be as thorough as you want as you say pull out last year's accounts all those other things that you can do especially if you've got everything you know on your computer yeah look back over previous years why not absolutely so okay so we've had a look then that's step one right that's the honest evaluation of where we are right now step two is an evaluation of your habits okay because ultimately if you keep doing the same things over and over and over and over and over and over again, you're going to get the same results. You're going to get the same results that you got before if you keep doing the same things. So this part is all about working out what you should be doing more of and also what you should be doing less of. OK, so where we are right now, everyone, this point in time where we are right now is all down to the decisions that we have made 
in our past that brought us here and also the habits that we have formed which have taken us there okay good or bad or indifferent okay but that is a simple you know if you'd have made different decisions in your past any one tiny thing that would change every single string of you know events right so as human beings we are ultimately habitual right our habits determine everything that we do and i think that when people start to look at this then they realize just how much our lives are impacted by the habits that we've got right from the route that we drive to work most people take exactly the same route every single day right walking the dog most people will take the dog in exactly the same route every single day most people will eat the same thing for breakfast they have the same shower routine right everything is a habit okay um and because of that what it's worth doing is highlighting which of those are serving us well and which of them aren't okay because one of the things that's also uh, true with habits is that a lot of the time it's easier to replace a habit that we don't want to continue than it is to stop it entirely. OK, so, for example, um, switching chocolate for fruit is easier than swapping chocolate for nothing. Right. Mm. Um, and I'm not saying you should swap chocolate for fruit. I'm just I'm just using that as an example. So the first question, therefore, that you should be asking yourself in this section to write down is what habits do you want to develop? OK. And again, these can be personal habits. They can be work related habits. You might want to have a list of work and a list of personal. For me personally, whenever I do these exercises, I like to do one set for like my personal life, as it were, my personal development. And I like to do a second set for all work things related. Right. Uh, but again, whatever works for you as you're going through this. So, as I say, uh, what should you be doing more of and what should you be doing less of? So what habits do you want to develop? That's question number four. OK, for example, it might be I want to make the habit of going live on Instagram twice a week. Or it could be I want to go in the habit of walking around the block for 15 minutes every day, which I'm not doing at the moment. OK, so whatever works, works for you. Yeah, each individual probably already knows what these things are deep down somewhere. They probably just instinctively know what habits they would like to develop. There's no rocket science here. And then following on from that, number five thing you need to do is what habits do you want to stop? And again, most people instinctively will know what their less desirable habits are, okay? Hitting the snooze button, drinking too much alcohol, smoking, whatever it might be, right? Whatever it might be, again, work and personal related because it's these habits. And this is the thing for most of us with our habits, doing it once doesn't make a difference. But it's not once you're doing it. It's over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. You know, maybe it's that 10 minute scroll on Facebook that you want to cut out in the mornings, because what would that 10 minutes be worth over the course of a year? OK, so all of those things, right, whatever it again is important to um, to you. And here's the kicker with this. You need to track it. OK, you need to track these habits that are important to you. So you can do this any way that you like. You can use Evernote. You can use Trello. Um, you can use a pen and a bit of paper. You can use a whiteboard. You can use a bit of, bit of paper on the fridge. Whatever, whatever works for you, right? I don't care. It's not important. It's just important to track it, okay? And the reason why it's so important to track it is because let's say you've got a goal of going for a 20-minute walk every day, okay? 20-minute walk every day to make you feel better, get some fresh air, all so important right now. Um, let's say that you've got a bit of paper on your fridge and you're just ticking the days off as you go. At a subconscious level, once you've got, say, seven on there, you don't want to break that streak, right? There's a little mind games that's going on then, which is like, I don't want to break that streak. And there's another little voice in your head that's going, let's see if we can get to 10. Let's see if we can get to 20. Let's see if we can get, oh, I'm never going to. And the longer you go and the longer you go, the less likely you're going to want to be to break that streak. Whereas if you don't record it, it's really simple just to let a day slide. And that's that's the problem. OK, especially with habits. Right? Um, I'm mindful of our time, so I'm going to speed up a bit. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> oh, you're frozen. We seem to have temporarily lost I'm... Ryan. He's frozen. Right, you're back, you're back. Oh, sorry. I don't know what happened there. I lost you too, so that was bizarre. Oh, um, okay. 
Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll repeat that bit because I'm not sure we got to it. So I was just saying I'm going to speed up. Um, so we're going to look at the third part, which is on goal setting, right? And the yeah. number six thing you want to do is brainstorm every single goal that you've got for 2021. Okay, we're not going to go any further than that. Just for 2021, go crazy, hold nothing back, right? Don't let, um, don't put any filter on it. Let your imagination just go wild, go bonkers, right? Imagine you could do anything that you wanted because we put these blocks and restrictions on ourselves, and we're setting ourselves up to fail. You know, um, maybe you've got a goal for um, what you want to save for. Maybe you've got a goal of what you want to travel, where you want to travel to when travel restrictions have dropped, right? Sports you want to try, books you want to read, habits you want to develop, things you want to quit, things you want to start, things you want to learn, musical instruments you want. Anything you like, right? Anything you like, there's no right and wrong answer. Um, what I like to do then next, after you've got that great long list and you should be getting enthusiastic and pumped up and excited about this list. This is like your ultimate dream list. How cool is that, right? And then the number seven thing you're gonna do from that is you're gonna choose one personal goal and one work-related goal that you want to accomplish in the next 90 days, okay? And these should be the ones that are gonna have the biggest impact on your life, right? Mm -hmm. So which of those would have the biggest impact on your life? And then what you're gonna do is write that down, write those two down. As I mentioned, I've got a bit of card in my wallet you might want to put it on your fridge. You might want to put it in your underwear drawer. You might want to put it on the inside of the bathroom cabinet because you know you're going to look in there every single day, right? You know you're going to look in there. So put it everywhere, in your car, anywhere that you're going to see. And get your phone. Hmm. On this, yeah, exactly, on the cover of your phone, absolutely. And get obsessed about it, right? Because eventually it will just start pounding away and away and away and your subconscious which is the whole point of this tap into your subconscious make you much more likely to achieve it right then point eight and we're nearly done and i'm going as quick as i can number eight right the next thing you then need to think about is what do you need to do differently to make this goal a reality and you're going to want to go back to your earlier lists that you made which were about your habits okay what and what you're doing, what actions you're taking, what do you need to do differently to get where you're going? Because we know if we just do everything the same, we're gonna get the same result. So if we want a different result, we've got to do something differently. It's time to then He's frozen to me, guys. I don't know if he's frozen to you right now. Oh, we can do back some things differently. You're going to need to eat differently. You're going to need to exercise differently, whatever it might be, okay? And the last thing that I want you to then think about, after you've worked out what you need to do differently, the last thing is think about who you need to be around, right? Mm. Who do you need to be around more to help achieve these goals? Who do you need to be around less to help these goals, right? Who has already achieved what you want to achieve and maybe can help you get there? Who is holding you back? Right, that's the and that's probably a more important one, right? Go through to Facebook, get rid of all those toxic influences because they're making a big, big impact on your goals, whether you know it or not. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about consumption, isn't it? Everything that you're seeing and taking in, and the people that you're speaking to, and the messages that you're hearing, they're all going to impact how you think and feel every single day. It's so, absolutely. so important to to. Yeah, we find that if you're going to sit and eat junk food every day, you're going to feel rubbish. Uh, and if you eat good food every day, you're going to feel good. As simple as that. It's the same with everything that we consume. Right, guys, that absolutely smashed in 28 minutes. Ryan managed to pull that totally out of the bag and go through the, the nine steps that he would implement in order to get massive results for goals in your business. This was also an industry first, because whilst Ryan and I have featured across tons of platforms separately on different blogs and on different websites and on different Facebook pages and Instagram pages, and we've done thousands of lives together on our own platforms, Salonology, um, we've never actually co-hosted on another platform, have we? So you saw it here first, people. Never. Massive 
thank you to Ryan uh, for going super, super quick. This is my life. This is what I have to deal with most of the time because he's like this all the time. Super, super high energy. Uh, but he really, really brings an important message and he really brings the motivation to help you start to hit those goals. So this video is going to stay up on the Timely channel. You can rewatch it as many times as you like. It's going to be there for the long term. So you can go through it again if you want to learn more. You can come and hang out with us in our communities too at Salonology if you wish to. Um, next week, I'll be back with the wonderful Valerie Del Forge. We'll be talking about some very exciting time management and organization strategies for the year ahead. Um, there is a lot of a lot of exciting content coming up. I'm going to be talking about accounts. I'm going to be talking with the CEO of Timely and Storytelling in your business as well this month. There's some awesome, awesome stuff coming up. Um, and I'm very, very excited to bring it to you. So, Ryan, thank you for joining us this morning. We've loved having you. You're definitely by far the most high energy uh, 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 guest that I've had. Um, and not that that's any kind of surprise. So thank you for being here. I will now cook you breakfast to say thank you. And uh, everybody, we've had a massive, massive audience with us today. So thank you everybody for joining. Um, lots of you are recognised and lots of new names too. So thanks for hanging out with us guys. Uh, it's been wonderful to have you here with us all. And a huge, huge Happy Tuesday, positive thinking to all of you. Uh, we've all got this and we're all going to move forward together in a positive way and make 2021 the best year it can be. Bye, everyone. <laughs>